Welcome to this edition of Dirt Talk with Drake York, and I've got Northern California sprint car driver Bobby McMahon on the show. Bobby, it's good to have you. Thanks for having me. I'm truly honored you have me. So, uh, before we start the show, I just uh, was curious if you're feeling okay after that hard tumble you had there at the start of the Peter Murphy Classic at Tulare. Actually, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I actually didn't have uh, no soreness whatsoever, which was a shock to me because I'm used to... Uh, being laid up for two three days uh, with the aftermath of something like that. Well, we're glad to see that you're okay. So, Bobby, what was your first introduction of the sport of racing? That would have been probably 1970-ish, 6970. Grandpa, Grandpa ran uh, micro midgets, and uh, we used to go out as kids uh, and watch. And then my first foray, 1972, is when I started racing quarter midgets. How old were you when you first started going to the races? Probably a month or two. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and Dad took me out early. You've been racing in Northern California for quite a while now. How long have you been racing in Northern California? This will be my 35th year of doing this. Uh, 1982, uh, I started racing the sprint cars, so 1972 quarter midgets, we could say 45 if you want to go that far back. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool, Bobby obviously a veteran of the sport. Bobby, I know you've uh, driven a couple types of cars. What types of cars have you driven? Uh, we could go through the list. Quarter midgets, uh, ran micro midgets, sprint cars, full midgets, non-wing sprint cars, silver crown cars, dirt and asphalt. So um, tried just a little bit of everything. Never did, Nothing with a fender. I, that's one thing <laughs> I wanted to try. Well, Bobby, obviously driven lots of type of cars, but which one has been your favorite? Definitely the wing sprint car, especially the 410. Um, you know, I've driven the 362, and uh, they're, you know, a race car is a race car, but there ain't nothing like a 410 wing sprint car to, to just hammer into the corner. As you mentioned, racing for 45 years here in California, did you think your career would be extended over this long time of period? No, I honestly thought I was done probably 2002, I guess. Um, I had stopped driving to go racing with my kids. We got them into quarter midgets and I was doing that and I was happy doing that. And then uh, kind of got my feet wet in 2008, got a phone call, asked to drive a car one time and, and it sucked me right back in and I've been back in the car ever since. Bobby, over your long career there, 45 years as we just talked about, what would you say is your biggest win? Biggest win? That's a, that's a good one. I, I, won, I won the Walt Ross race at Calistoga 97, I want to say. Um, once, you know, the, the Speed Week, won three races during Speed Week in 96 was kind of cool. Um, probably, probably the Walt Ross race at, at Calistoga is a big deal to me. You driven for a lot of car owners over your career. Can you name them all? <laughs> oh, now you got a good one going. Uh, I've driven for obviously my mom and dad. I've driven for Keith Espindola, Roy Bumgarner, Clyde Lamar. Uh, I've driven my uncle Jim Paniagua's cars. Um, man, Ted Finkenbinder. <sighs> Probably, I mean, there's a bunch. I've, I'm forgetting Berth Lathrop out of the out of the Petaluma area. I drove his car um, just recently. I've driven for Scott Hall. I've driven for Donnie Van Lair. Um, I know I'm missing probably a dozen or so more, <laughs> <laughs> just to name a few off the top of my head. But yeah, I've driven for a lot of guys, and 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 knock on wood, I've driven for a lot of great people that have given me awesome opportunities to keep doing this. You mentioned Scott Hall. I heard a funny story of how you got in that car. So could you tell us how you got into the '56? Yeah, Scott it was kind of a kind of a dare type thing. Uh, we had gone to the first uh, SCCT race in Antioch, and I was just going there to help uh, help uh, Jared Sorries. And uh, Scott had come to the trailer, was kind of razzing me for not bringing my car. I told him I, you know, at the time I only went a 410. That's all my car is. And so he kind of was like, "Well, if we get you a motor, he goes, will you bring your car out?" And I said, "Absolutely." And then uh, as he was walking away, you know, I said, hey, well, better yet, why don't we just put me in that 56K car and we'll see what happens. And a couple days later, he gave me a call. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I forced his hand, but we had a great time there at Placerville. I wish we'd have run a little bit better, but uh, Scott was uh, uh, very gracious to let me get in his car and, and we had a great time. Just didn't run as good as we wanted to. 
How many sprint car wins do you think you've had over your career? Um, I've never been one that's kept track of stats. Um, I would estimate? say I'd probably estimate probably 40 or 50, roughly. I mean, I, I am, you know, between them all, between all the types, I mean, I've won asphalt sprint car races. I've run, uh, you know, uh, the winged ones, obviously, 360, 410. Um, and so I know I'm roughly right around there. You, uh, you have won a lot of pavement races, as you just mentioned there. What is the pavement side of sprint car racing like compared to the dirt? It's a long day, I can tell you that. Uh, we, you know, when you go there, because they spend a lot of time practicing and testing before we do anything, and uh, uh, you're at the track at like 10 o'clock in the morning, and you know, you don't start racing until about the same time dirt stuff starts. So it's like six o'clock before you do anything, but you you test and practice all day. But as far as driving the cars, um, for me, I think coming from a dirt background, they were easy for me because if the car got a little twitchy, a little sideways it didn't affect the way I drove the car. I just stayed with it where there's some guys that, have, that I noticed that were strictly asphalt guys and if they get a little twitchy, they were out of the gas where somebody like myself that had, that had the dirt background, it, it didn't, didn't affect me. I would just stay in the throttle and ride it out because I figured I could do it anyway. You've had some pretty cool paint schemes over the years, but out of all those, which one was your favorite? Probably the pavement car. Uh, when I drove for Keith Espindola, the, the blue and yellow uh, beast car he had, and his silver crown car was painted the same way. Um, it got a lot of photos of it, a lot of compliments. Uh, ended up being on the cover of Open Wheel um, because it was it was a really good looking car. He always called it the Corvette he never, he wished he had had, so. Mm -hmm. Bobby, we know a lot of drivers and crew members out here on the West Coast, or actually in sprint car racing, have superstitions or race rituals before or after the race. Do you have any superstitions or rituals? No, not really. I've been doing so long that uh, uh, every, everything that I can imagine has happened, so I just kind of just go with the flow. I don't do anything out of the norm as far as putting one glove on before the other, one shoe on before this. I just, I just go out and try and do my thing. As a kid, you talked about um, coming to the races at a very young age. Who was your favorite driver as a kid? As a kid, and, and probably still to this day, um, I always looked up to Jimmy Sills. Uh, he was so versatile in everything he drove, and I tried to emulate what he did. Um, you know, I obviously didn't win as many races as he has, um, but he could always get in anything and be competitive, whether it was a midget silver crown car, dirt, asphalt, sprint car, non-wing, wing, 360, 410. It didn't matter. He was competitive. And I always wanted to be like him, where if I got in something, I was going to be competitive. So far, uh, how has your 2017 season been? Well, we've only had two races, and we've already had to build a brand new car, so <laughs> it hasn't gone well. Um, we had a decent run in Bakersfield, not as good as we want, and, and, and that was the driver's fault. Uh, when, when you get to the half century mark in your birthday, it, uh, the uh, I run out of gas pretty easy. And uh, we had a good car, just the driver let us down. So uh, we were hoping for better things at Tulare. That was only the second race, and, and, uh, and we never really got a chance to show our hand. We were decent in the heat race, and, and, and we had run good during the pole shuffle. And, and had a decent starting spot and just you know just got caught up in a in an accident that took us out so we're hoping for better things uh going forward yeah you barely made it across the finish line at Tulare, so technically you did start so. i did start i so did you got start points for that and i uh, got my got my starting points and and uh so that was that was a plus and uh we, we, we made it almost to turn one <laughs> bobby do you have any future plans for the rest of the season uh, we're going to run all the King of West races. Obviously, budget d dictates that. Usually, and it's not the car that's the problem. It's if we have any motor problems because we only have the one. So if if we hurt that in any way, that kind of cuts back what we do. So um, trying to make some more deals with with uh, with Scott Hall or even Donnie Van Lair to possibly run some more of the SCT SCCT races, and uh, that's about it. I mean. I don't have any plans to do anything else. What's something that most people don't know about you that they should know about you? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, 
I've been doing this so long, everybody pretty much knows me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no secrets, you know, especially with social media nowadays, you can't hide nothing. So, uh, I, I guess, I guess I, I, my passion for the sport, probably more than anything. Um, I, I know I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty quiet when I'm out in the, in the pit area and I don't, I don't do a whole lot of socializing other than, uh, with, with the fans that come around, but, but my passion for the, the sport of sprint car racing, especially in Northern California, is pretty high. And uh, I think even even when I did step away, I still came to the races because uh, I just enjoy the sport and I enjoy the people in it uh, probably more than people know. When you have time off from driving, what do you like to do? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I'll usually just uh, sit in my lounge chair, and my boss can attest to that, and I'll, whatever season it is, I'll either be sitting there watching the Giants game, or I'll be watching a 49er game, it's one or the other. What is your day job to fund the race car? I'm going to, to fund the race car? I don't know if my day job does quite enough to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we got good people that help us out with the race car, but uh, what I would do during the day, during the break, Monday through Friday, I'm an environmental supervisor for a, an environmental league our environmental cleanup uh, company. Wow, that's really cool. Do you have a pet um, that you take to the races sometimes? Yeah, he comes most of the time. His name's Kane, and it's spelled like Casey Kane. And uh, he goes most of the time. He's a little, he's freaked out on the ride here. He doesn't like riding in the car, but once he gets here, he's pretty good until the motor's fired up, and then he's freaked out again. <laughs> Yeah, we have a uh, we have two dogs, and I know I've tried to convince my parents to take them to the races, and they're like, no. Oh, you gotta bring them. You just you never know. But he yeah. don't he don't like the noises, and it's funny because he's good to go, and then as soon as he he knows, as soon as I start putting my uniform on, he's ready to go sit back in the truck. He's had enough. <laughs> so today, later today, I should say, your family will accept the Founders Cup at the Hall of Fame induction. What does that mean to you and your family? It's it's quite an honor uh, to be recognized uh, in Northern California uh, for such a prestigious award. And uh, we're all pretty excited about it. I'm the only one left in California, so uh, I guess I'm the only one here representing our family, but mom and dad were pretty excited. I talked to them on the phone. I haven't really talked to Paul about it. Um, not even sure if he's aware of it. I'm pretty sure he is. Um, but uh, but it's, it's just truly a big, big honor for our family to be recognized in Northern California. So when you listen to music, what type of music do you listen to? I'm all over the board. Um, if Usually if I'm in the car with the wife, it's we're listening to <laughs> Sirius XM and the NASCAR channel, <laughs> or we're listening to country music. And if I'm usually by myself, like when I'm driving to work, because my work takes me up and down the state all the time, and I'm usually in a vehicle by myself, I'll go anywhere from from Hair Nation, which is 80s uh, metal rock and roll, to, to 80s, just regular 80s pop music, and then I'll go to to the 60s rock and roll. I bounce all over the place listening to different stuff, just depending on whatever will keep me awake while I'm driving down the road. So you'd say mostly rock? Yeah, mostly rock for me. Well, that's really cool. I'm the same way. Well, that's going to wrap up our show today. Thank you, Bobby. Thanks for having me. It was truly an honor.